Hey, what's up, everyone? Pastor Mike here. Before we get into today's message, I want to invite you to listen to this podcast to the very end because I'm going to be back and tell you about some more great ways to stay connected to Jesus. We're looking at Matthew chapter 7 this week, the section where Jesus compares two different houses, uh, one that stays standing and one that falls with a great crash. And I think the point is pretty self-explanatory, but just to give us an illustration, maybe a more modern day illustration of what Jesus is looking at, uh, I want you to think of two well-known American cities, New York City and New Orleans. And on on the outside, they look very similar. They're they're both built right on the water. Um, Both have massive, massive buildings. Um, but underneath the surface, they are incredibly different. You might know that New York City, underneath the ground, New York City was built on rock. It's just, it's all rock. That they decided they wanted to build those tall skyscrapers on a foundation of, of rock. New Orleans, on the other hand, is not built on a foundation of rock. The city sits on a foundation of swamp. That is just swamp underneath the city. And it sits ben- below sea level. Um, you know, so the city is down here. And it goes up a little bit, the ground goes up a little bit here. And then here's where you have the levees, the uh, the walls that are meant, that are there to protect the uh, the city from when the water comes rising up too high. And so when those levees broke back during Hurricane Katrina, it really wasn't surprising that there was so much damage and so much destruction in New Orleans um, because they were sitting on a foundation of swamp. And we saw what happens when, uh, when the storms come in and you're not sitting on a good foundation. Now, both cities look exactly the same as long as, what's the case? As long as nothing bad ever happens. As long as there's no storms, as long as the waters never rise, as long as there are no high winds, as long as there are no hurricanes, then everything is completely safe and they look exactly the same. But when the storm comes, the storm is what reveals the weakness or the strength of our foundations. And Jesus knows that the same is true in our lives is that when the storms come, when the challenges and the struggles, um, the different things that we don't quite know how to deal with, those are the things that really reveal the strength of our, the strength or the weakness of our foundation. Um, And he tells us how to deal with that when he says two things. You know, he says, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. So two different things. And today I want to focus on that first one, the one of hearing these words of mine. And that phrase makes me think of a a pretty pretty well-known politician Who's, uh, who I recently heard has a favorite Bible verse. And I'm going to read the Bible verse, what, uh, what they say is their favorite Bible verse, and I want you to think about which book of the Bible this is in. Are you ready? So the favorite Bible verse is this. To minister to the needs of God's creation is an act of worship. To ignore those needs is to dishonor the God who made us. And of course, that very famous Bible verse is in the book of... Yeah, you're right. It's not, if you have trouble thinking about which book it's in, it's okay because it's, it's not actually in the Bible. And yet this, uh, this politician cites this as their favorite Bible verse over and over again and again. I'm going to read six different phrases and I want you to tell me which one is in the Bible. Ready? Which one of these you can find in the Bible. So phrase number one, God just wants me to be happy. Phrase number two, everyone is God's child. Phrase number three, God helps those who help themselves. Phrase number four, Money is the root of all evil. Phrase number five, when a Christian dies, heaven gets another angel. And phrase number six, God won't give you more than you can handle. Which one of those is in the Bible? If you picked none of them, you are correct. None of those are in the Bible. And yet you hear those phrases very often in life, um, even by well-intentioned Christians who think that they are quoting the Bible. But they're not really. It's slightly different. You might hear slight variations of those, but none of those are true statements that you will find that you will find in the Bible. And you might not think that's a big deal until you remember that it was back in the Garden of Eden, what destroyed the world, and what corrupted Adam and Eve for the length of their the, the length of their time on Earth, was when Satan came up to Eve and said, "Did God really say?" And that was enough just to be slightly off, just a little bit, on what God had told her. It was enough to ruin all of creation. It was enough to fill all of our lives and the lives of our families with sin that is so horrible and so destructive. Did God really say? In the book of John, Jesus says this. Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth. And I bet you know the next phrase and the truth will set you free. We hold to his teaching. 
when we define truth by what Jesus says to us. Nothing more, nothing less. And Jesus promises that the result is that our hearts will be set free. Pastor Mike here. Thanks for sticking around. I promise to tell you about another great way to grow in your faith, and here it is. Amber L.B. Swenson's podcast called Little Things. Have you heard it yet? Amber, if you don't know, is one of our Time of Grace writers and bloggers. Every week I listen to Little Things as Amber gives us little ways to think about our faith and how we can grow closer to Jesus. I hope you can check it out. This great member of the Time of Grace team would love to help you grow in your faith this week.